Ready? <clears throat> All right. Welcome, everybody. Um, today, I'm going to be working on a few tutorial videos to create a combination lock uh, door that when you put in the right combination, it opens. And I'll go ahead and show you what it will do once the once the tutorials are completed, you'll have what I have, so sorry for the loud game noise. Two, two, three. Just click and do that. And as soon as I set one of them wrong, the combination is now correct and correct. These loops up through nine and back to zero. So I'm just going to set this back to three. This to two. And you can see that you can edit the combination right here. So four, five, Two. So run over here. Hopefully this will work. Four. Four. Five. Two. There it is. And as soon as one of those scales off, the door shuts again. So you have a nice combination door lock system. So what I think is anybody you know spends enough time can do this, but part of what I want to talk about and go through in this tutorial is how to create something that is very cleanly coded. So if you look at my event graph, this is the extent of it, and then I've got all these functions. So I've got an action function, and it's very simple. And I have a parent object here, and here's the event graph for that. And I have a few functions here, so I have an action function that does something simple and discrete. I have a check combo function, again, does something simple and discrete. And I have an increment, oops, increment function, which, again, does something simple and discrete. And this actually calls another function inside, which is this one, which is the most complicated function. But again, if you can see, this is just three replicated paths. And what it's doing is actually fairly simple and, again, discrete. So. I want to talk today, I'm going to do a few videos. The first one is going to be setting up uh, the parent class, which is just going to be the combination and a little point light to that goes red or green that displays whether or not you've got the combination right or not. And then what I'll do in a later video um, after I set up clicking so that you can actually click on the little nodes to make it work as opposed to typing in one, two, or three or something like that, is I'll, I will extend, I'll make a child um, which is a child of this combination lock, and I'll add the door functionality in. And why that's important is because once you have this combination lock, uh, you can make as many children as you want, and you can make them do different things. So this one happens to be a combination lock that's hooked up to a door, but I could take the same combination lock and make another child and hook it up to, say, uh, an elevator or a set of lights or um, some, auto, you know, some turret. If you're making a, a uh, shooter, it could turn on the turret for your team or something like that. So you can hook up this combination lock to do any number of things on multiple children. So that's enough to do before we get started. Let's go ahead and start. So what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder just so I can keep everything organized and I'll call this um, combo lock tutorial. And I'm going to go ahead and move this stuff that I already created into its own folder just so I can get it out of the way. Move here. Okay, so we're nice and cleaned up. Let's go ahead and go into Combo Lock Tutorial. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a blueprint, blueprint class. Wow, I can't speak today. It's just going to be a regular actor. And we're going to call this combo lock parent. Now, uh, I say parent because this is going to be this and what we extend in a later video to this. Um, so we'll go ahead and open this up. And we're going to need three buttons. So we're going to do a nice Q. We'll call this button one. And then we're going to go ahead and duplicate it, and we'll call this button 2. And we're going to go ahead and duplicate again, so button 
country. And now we've got three nice buttons, and we need to create some text renders so that we can see what the values are set to. So text render, and we'll call this button one text, and we're going to put this under button one. And we're going to create a new text render. We'll call this button two text. And we're going to go ahead and put that under that. And we'll create a third text render. We'll call this button three text. And we're going to put that right under there. And this is just organizational. Um, these probably will be moved around, but it is worth noting that um, if you, say, have the text floating up here, if you move button one, say you want these buttons to be spread out so that the combination lock isn't all on one wall, you could put these you know, across a level or something, the text goes with it. So that is a nice uh, benefit of that. So let's go ahead and move these back. And what we want is we want them to be pretty small. So I think I have them at something like 0.2. I can't remember for sure, but I'll have to do that to all three. So let's go ahead and grab both of these. And we'll do locked by two. I assume we got that correct. Yeah, I think that's about right. It doesn't really matter. And what we'll do is we'll move button one. Oops. I'm going to go ahead and turn snaps back on and put it to 10 just for ease of movement. I'm going to move this, say, 30 that way. And this one will be 30 that way. And then I'll take all of the text, and I'm going to move it all, oops. Thirty that way. I'm going to take all of the text. I want to make sure I don't accidentally grab the red. I don't know why it's doing that. That's okay, we can do it right here. So. I think what's happening. That's so weird. Okay, well, we'll do it by the numbers. So we'll go ahead and raise this number up to, say, 50. I'm not sure why it's doing that. We'll say 60 just to get it floating up above. Actually, these can be far smaller than this, so we'll do 0.05. Yeah. That, well, no, we'll leave them at 0.2. I'm not sure what the best way to do this is, but and then we'll move these over to the left, say minus 20. Oops, minus 20. Center them up a little bit, and we're going to set all of their default value. To say zero. I think it's a zero, 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 compile. Save. Okay. So let's go ahead and just pull one of these out here just to see. Yeah, it looks about the right size. You can see the text is a little bit small, so we can scale that up if we want, because this text size is going to be relative to the size of these buttons. So we'll go ahead and do three and three pile. That should be about right. Yeah, there we go. So now we've got the same three buttons you see over there. And we're going to add a point light now. So point light, and I don't need to rename it. I'll just call it point light. All right. So now we need to set up some functions, and if you've never worked with functions, they work exactly like um, the construction and event graph. They just fire off inside their own, no own nodes, which can then be triggered either internally or externally. For instance, if I go some function foo, then in the event graph, I can just call foo, and I can do it on any one of these, and it will execute all of the nodes in here starting with this and ending with an output type if there is any. Um, now I don't really want that so let's go ahead and delete that. Now we're going to create a function called increment and this is going to increment the numbers um, and then it will check the combo 
by calling the check combo function. And then we're going to add a third one called action, not occasion, action, which is going to do the action um, and increment is going to take an input. And what we're going to do here, and this is not the most obvious thing, oops. Um, what we're going to do for increments input is we're actually going to take a button in. And this is going to be a static mesh component reference. It's going to take a static mesh component reference in so that when you have it here, it takes in the static mesh. Okay, so what we're going to do is then an in increment. We need to set up a um, function that and I'm going to have to look back at my old one just to keep this moving along because. No output takes in. Okay, yep. Okay, so increment is going to take in, has the button in. It's also going to take in three. Actually, I don't know if I need to do that. Intent, regional. No, I don't need to do that. I'm noticing ways to clean this up as I'm going. Okay, so I take that back. Increment doesn't need any of these three. It'll just need this one. And then inside what we're going to do is we're going to get button one, get button two, and get button three. And what these are going to do now is we're going to compare. We're going to see if any of these are equal. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a sequence. Now we're going to add a pin. And we're going to, off each sequence, we're going to have an if. Control C, Control V, Control V. And we're going to check. So we have three cases here. And what are the cases? Well, they are if this object is equal to this object. And if that's the case, then we do this one. And it will execute the true node. The second is if this object, button in, and by the way, button in is just a button that's going to be clicked to fire this off. Um, and to test this, what we'll do is we'll actually fire increment off, where one corresponds with button one, two on the keyboard corresponds with button two, and three with three, um, just to test it. But then later we'll actually set it up for clicking. I'll do that in the second video. So here we go. And that is going to go up to 2, and this is going to go up to 3. And so what we need to do, we're going to need some variables. We're going to need a variable called button1value. We're going to need a variable called button2value. We're going to need one called button3value. And these are all going to be integer types. You can type int and then hit enter. Int enter. Okay. And their default is all going to are all going to be zero, which is what it starts on, so that's good. <laughs> so what we're going to do is if this gets incremented up, then it's going to Set button well if it's so we want these values to go from zero to nine. So we would just increment it, but what happens if we're at nine? We need to go back to zero. So we need to do another if for each of these.
I'll spread these out a little bit. And what's the condition going to be on this? So, if button one value is less than nine, is going to be our cap. Put this up here because we're dealing with button one. So let's say that's true. What we're going to do is it's less than nine, so we're just going to increment the integer plus one. And we'll deal about what to do if it's false in a second, but we're going to do the same thing. So let's go ahead and get button two value, and we're going to do less than nine. And we're going to increment. The integer. And we're going to do the same thing for button 3 value. Less than 9. And we're going to increment. And this is going to be a good time for me to compile and save. I know it's not compiling. So value passed into target. Where am I? Interesting. Why is that not working? by reference. I know I'm using this. Oh, because I'm not passing the reference in. So button 2 into this, and button 3 into this. That's the easy case. However, if these are false, what we want to do is set it to 0, because that means that it's not less than 9, so it's 9 or greater. And so if it's false, we are going to say set button one value to zero, and in this case we're going to set button two value to zero, and in this case we're going to set button three value to zero. So now we are incrementing these values up to nine, and then the next one we put it down to zero, and so we have now incremented um, the actual values that's backing it, but what we want to do is set the text. So let's go ahead and get a reference to each of these three texts, and we're going to set text so regardless we want it to do this, and we're going to set the text to button and it's automatically to string it which is good. Set that on top for organization. And we're going to do this for here and here. Now we'll have to replace those button one. Don't let me forget people on the internet. Okay. And again, we need to pump both of these execution pins in before I forget to do that. And then let's go and change this. Doesn't need to be button one. This doesn't need to be button one. This should really be button 2 value for this one, and button 3 value for this one. So, again, what is this doing? And this is the complicated one, but it looks like we're almost done. It's checking. There's a button that's coming in, and that's going to be whatever of these components is selected. Uh, eventually, that'll be selected by our hit, but um, whichever button is selected, it's comparing it to see, is this equal to button 1, or 2, or 3? And it's important here um, I'll note this, that these falses don't go to a return type or end this function execution because it needs to go in here, uh, hit false, that ends this thread, and then once that's done, it'll actually then go to the sequence. But if this false were to return, say, um, out of this function, then uh, we would have a problem. So, so if we were to do something like this, then we would have a problem. What I'm going to do 
is at a very bottom sequence because we probably do want this to return just in case we want anything to happen after this. And I'm going to add a return node down here. So it's not actually going to exit this function until one of these three has completed. And what I'm going to do here Uh, let me check what I did in the other one, just for... I don't know why I'm here. Let's go to content, view options. I don't want to see the engine content right now. Nope. Sorry, guys. Here, combo lock. Can't graph, nothing. So do you think of it? Average brain. Static mesh. Oh, then it just checks the combo. Okay. So I'm actually, all of that functionality that I just did was in here, and I don't really need that because I realize this is redundant. Um, so, going back to content, what we're going to do now is all three of these are going to call check combo. Actually, we only need one because check combo is neutral as to which button was clicked. All right, so now we've incremented it and we've updated all the text renders to uh, match this. And what we're going to do now is we're going to check the combo. How are we going to check the combo? Well, we need to create a string. So what we need to actually do is get all three of these, a reference to all three of them. So let's go ahead and drag these out, get get, get, and we're going to string, control C, control V, control V, and we're going to make all of these ints into strings. In the meantime, we're going to add a variable called combo, and one called actual numbers input, and these are going to both be of string, so you can type in STRI and then hit enter. STR will do it actually. And we're going to set the combo default to 1, 2, 3. Oops, 1, 2, 3. There we go. And this doesn't need any initial value because it'll end up getting set to 0, 0, 0, or 0, whatever it is, as soon as this is called the first time. And then we're going to append, which has this nice add pin notes. We're going to append all three of these into one string. And what we're going to do is if, and what's the condition? Well, we want to check th that combo, actually I don't even know if you need this. Equals, and we want the e string equals this value. And if that's true, uh, then this needs no inputs, but it's going to have an output. And that output is actually going to be a Boolean. So this is, um, we'll call this action on. And this is just so that you can have an action go one way and then the other way. So you want to animate a door opening and then closing if the combination goes off. So what we're going to do is copy this, control C, control V. If this is false, we'll leave action on to false. And if it's true, we'll leave action on to true. And there you go. That's that. Uh, now action isn't doing anything. So let's go ahead and compile and save. Check combo. If that happens, it's because you've changed the signature, so I was not returning anything, and then I started returning a boolean, so you can just do um, check combo again, and it'll actually have this output type here. And you also uh, don't need to call action from inside here. If you want, what you could do is have a outermost function that th after this takes the output and calls this, but what I'm doing here 
uh, we'll do the same thing. Combo. Oh, I yes. Okay, sorry. I did this wrong. It doesn't need that. It doesn't need that. It doesn't need that. And actually, an increment. This is going to miscompile now. That's not okay. So let's go to check combo. So when we're checking the combo, actually, I'm not sure what's the best way to do this. This would be an interesting discussion. It seems like so we're incrementing, and once we've incremented, we check the combo, and then we probably want to do action. An action then needs an input, which will be action on. So that means that this probably will need an output, which we'll call the same action on. Oops. And then in check combo, what we'll do is take this. Nope. We don't even need this true false. No, yeah, we do. We do this. True goes to action on. Copy this, paste it. False goes to. Yeah, and now this is not compiling correctly. Okay, so what I was trying to decide is whether or not I should call the action from inside the increment function or from inside the check combo function. And I've decided to put it in the increment function just because that's sort of the outermost function and instead of trailing down deeper and deeper into the rabbit hole, I decided to go ahead and do this as a discrete function that doesn't have any dependency on this. And then afterwards to do this. And so the output in check combo, this is what it's going to return a true or a false based on this. And actually, I don't need the if. I can just do this. It's just going to do the evaluation on the return line. That's so silly of me. Okay, so now it's going to return this equality boolean here. And in increment, it's going to take that equality boolean and pass it on to action, which now we need to fill out with some functionality. So action, uh, what do we want to do? Well, for the parent, not much. Um, we're pretty much done. But what we do want to do is change the point light. Um, and we'll give this a default value of somewhere in the red scale. We'll copy this hex linear. Okay, and so what we'll do is we're going to set sorry, if, and we're going to pump this straight into here, and we're going to set point, nope, gotta get a reference to it, set color, set light color. So if the action is on, we want to set it to something in, say, the green range to let you know, hey, this is working. And if this is not, then we want the same thing, but I'll go ahead and put in that hex that I copied. That was a terrible mistake. Oh no. Okay. File save. Yes. Sorry about that. We'll just manually put it in here because I have a, a node copied into the clipboard. And that's going to really mess things up. Okay. There we go. File save. Okay, so that's everything you need as far as these three functions. 
I believe I may have missed something and we'll find out shortly. Um, and I'm not going to mess with showing too much how to set up inputs for testing this. I'm going to try and wrap this video up. It looks like we're at oh, about 30 minutes already, so I'm going to try and wrap this up right now. But I did set up three um, input actions in the project settings. One, two, and three. Um, if you are having trouble with inputs uh, and these don't worry, enable input and player controller. Get player controller. I think this should work. When it's released, we're going to increment. And it just needs to know which button. So, and button three. I think this will work, and I actually don't want it on the pressed. So, I'll click to remove that and put in released, compile, save, and I. We'll see. My guess is this is not going to work, that I have a bug somewhere in there, because I went so fast. But, let's find out. One, two, three. There it is. Yeah, it's on the keyboard. If I hit three again, it goes into four, and it's red. So that's this entire function. It doesn't do much right now, but it should go up to nine, and then back to zero. So let's put that on one, and then hit three again to go up to... And if you want to, you can go in and expose the combo, make it editable. And when you do that, then you can now click on this and change the combo. So let's do 752. Enter. And we'll play again. And I can click, it's not doing anything because I haven't hooked it up. So let's go one, two, three. It doesn't do anything. But let's go to seven, seven, five, two, I think. Two, there it is. So that's it for this video. In the next video, I'm going to hook up this little clicker uh, so that you can click on it like you can with uh, these here. Click. I'm not clicking the keyboard at all. Let's... Anyways, so that's it for now. Sorry for the birds and background noise. I'll delete that out. Where is the audio? Get out of here. Now if I play, it's silent. Okay, thank goodness. So yeah, next time we will be uh, hooking up the clicking so that you have effectively this. And it's important to note too that since this is a blueprint, I want to say this one thing. This is a blueprint, which means that if I copy this over, I can then take this one and set this one to one, oops, to one, two, three. And it will need three numbers. If you do less than that, it won't work. But as long as you have three numbers in here that are one through nine, then when you come over here, this one is now set to one, two, three. And this one is not. Oh, and I can't do that because this one's consuming the input. So if you want them all to, uh, if you want them all to work, you can check consume input off on these and it will it'll increment them together because we're just pressing keys we're not actually clicking on them but now when you fly over um, you can see they both increment so let's go to two three this one turns on and this one's seven five two so we need to go up so, so that one's now off seven two four five six oh, dang it. five let's go up through so that one's on and this one's now off because 752 is not the combo on that. So that's it for this video. I'm going to go ahead and stop the stream here. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, next up, and I'll start in just about 10 to 15 minutes here, is going to be clicking. So you can click on each of these. Appreciate it, and you guys have a good day.